Today we're going to do a valve adjustment on my 3126B. Okay, so we're getting ready to get started on this. Um, I just want to point out here what I've done. The way the CAT procedure is set up is that they've got an alignment hole in the flywheel and there is a hole right above the starter and you can see CAT makes a special tool but you can also use a long screwdriver and so then that that hole uh, just has a little plug here, um, 15 millimeter head on my engine, uh, comes out real easy. And then you basically just rotate the engine until you can push that screwdriver in. Uh, you can do it either by hand or just if you have somebody helping you bump the starter. Um, I kind of felt like doing it by hand was better, uh, although it does take a lot of torque to turn this thing over. So let's go inside and get this going. Okay, so I'm here in the back of the bus. Uh, you can see I've got the valve cover off. That was incredibly simple. Uh, there's 14 10 millimeter bolts that hold just this this upper valve cover down. You can see that there's, um, I guess you could call it a lower valve cover. I'm sure Cat has a name for it, but you don't need to remove that, uh, which is really nice. I'm gonna have to replace the gasket because um, even though this wasn't leaking, the gasket is clearly original and it did get damaged. Um, other thing you got to do to remove this is to get is to take off the um, the little breather cap. Um, that there's just all you need to do is take that single screw off. Everything came apart really easily, and I have to say that's one of the things that. I really like about this cat engine is that everything that I've had to do on it's very serviceable. So first observation um, is this engine has a hundred thousand miles on it. Everything really looks pretty clean and under here. Um, not seeing a whole ton of sludge or anything like that. So uh, that's positive. You can see the injectors there. Uh, remember that because this is a rear facing engine, this is cylinder six. Um, and then cylinder one is up over there. Cylinder one's harder to get at, and so is cylinder two um, because of the hoses and all of that. And so one of the things that I'm uh, realizing is that I wish I'd done this when I was redoing the cooling system because I had all of this apart. It would have been a whole lot easier, but oh well. Note for the future. <coughs> um, another thing to note is, uh, which is kind of funny to me, is that this looks very similar to the valve train on my 1947 Caterpillar bulldozer, uh, which I adjusted the valve lash on. Uh, 3126 and C7, they're three valve engines, so you got the one intake, that's the big rocker. The two, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the one exhaust, that's the big rocker. The two intakes, that's the small rocker with the bridge. So when you're measuring the valve lash, you're measuring it on the intake between the rocker and the bridge. So one thing that you may have to do is push the bridge down um, because it can it can come up and because you're trying to measure the, the lash right here, um, you need to make sure that that's what you're actually measuring. Uh, so I'm halfway through. I did everything I can on this rotation. Now I gotta go back underneath and rotate it another, uh, or another 360 degrees. Um, <clears throat> the intake valves on this were all way off. Um, spec is 15 thousandths on them. I took a piece of cardboard here that you probably cannot read just to make notes on both what the lash is supposed to be, the procedure, and then the before and after. Um, so cylinders one and two, the intakes were both less than five thousandths. They were almost zero lash. It's supposed to be 15 plus or minus three thousandths. Um, <clears throat> cylinder four was five thousandths. Uh, right on the dot. The exhausts, those weren't too bad. Um, one was a little bit tight. It was right at the at the bottom of the limit um, at 22 thousandths. 25 is nominal, plus or minus three. And then the number three, that was out of, out of tolerance at 30 thousandths. Might have even been a little bit looser than that, um, but 30 is the largest feeler gauge I have. So I've got a, everything within spec now. Um, even though the number one was technically within spec, I, I kind of look at it as if it's right on the edge of spec, it's going to be, it's probably going to be out of spec soon. So I decided to just loosen it up a little bit. So now it's at 26. Um, 
got all the intakes more or less right on 15 16 and um, I did not adjust that number five exhaust just because it was at 24 and at that point there's no point in adjusting it uh, that one that one is within spec so let's go rotate the engine and finish this up all right so I'm about to rotate the engine over but just one little trick here is that you're when you're doing this um, I'm rotating it one revolution so that I can do the other half of the valves. Um, to help make this easier, what I've done is I just uh, scratch um, a little line in the grease that's on the front of the balancer, and that way I, I'll know about where, uh, the crank, where the crank pulley needs to be. That'll make it a whole lot easier to line things up, especially since I'm doing it myself, rather than um, having to just kind of keep on guessing until I think I got it right. So let's rotate it. All right, I'm back up here and I've gotten started on doing the adjustment, the second half of the adjustment. Um, did the number six cylinder here, number five intake, number four exhaust. Um, but I wanted to, I wanted to just show quickly how I'm finding these intake valves. Um, every single one of them so far has been way tight, uh, which surprised me. Um, Five thousandths, five thousandths or even tighter than that and so right here you can see this is the number three and you can maybe I know you can't really see much you hear just the slightest bit of movement and so then here's number five which I've adjusted and you can hear you can hear it lot more movement there and that's what it's supposed to be like um, you know whole point of valve flash is that there is some clearance and you might say well isn't tighter going to be better N no it's not because if it gets too tight then what's going to happen is the the valves are going to get held open which is exactly what you don't want um, <clears throat> and I do sort of wonder a little bit if that was happening on this um, but either way the cam profile is not what it's supposed to be so better for if, if you're going to have either of them happen i guess neither is really good uh, <laughs> but um but yeah so the, these intake valves were all were all really tight um you can see on this one this is a five thousandths feeler gauge and i can't i can't even pretend to get that in and then of course five thousandths is much tighter or much yeah, much tighter than what spec is, fits in easily. And if I grab the 15, I'm trying to go quickly here. Um, if I grab the 15 and put that in, may take a little bit of effort to get it, to get at it. I will say these intake valves are harder to get on uh, or to get the feeler gauge and and I'm doing it one-handed which is also harder but you can see there fits right in all right time to finish things up I put about 1600 miles on the RV since doing the valve adjustment and it definitely is running better. Uh, it seems to be getting better fuel economy, which some people report. Uh, I've seen reports of up to about one mile per gallon. Not sure if I'm doing quite that much better, and there were a few things different about this trip, so it wasn't 100% apples to apples, but it definitely is doing better than it was. Um, the other thing I noticed is that I seem to be running lower boost and consequently lower EGTs when I'm cruising down the road. And overall, max EGT seem to have gone down as well. So this definitely needed to be done, no surprise. Uh, it was 100,000 miles uh, on the engine, which is when you're supposed to do it. And who knows what the service history was like in the past. So if you haven't done this, don't be afraid of it. There's really nothing that's bad about it. In fact, CAT makes it pretty easy with having the... Uh, pinhole in the flywheel that you can use to make sure that everything's aligned correctly. So get it done and your engine will thank you. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.